The Chicago Great Western Railway was founded on January 16, 1892 by A.P. Stickney, who was a St. Paul Railroad executive. Seventeen years later, on August 19, 1909, the Chicago Great Western Railroad was incorporated by J.P. Morgan & Company, which purchased the Chicago Great Western Railway on August 21, 1909 for $12 million. The Chicago Great Western's main line began in Chicago and headed west towards Iowa. In Iowa, the rail split, heading towards Missouri and Minnesota. There were 49 Chicago Great Western stations in Illinois by 1910, including Villa Park, St. Charles, Esmond, Pearl City, Stockton, Elizabeth, and North Hanover, where our story begins. This is the site of North Hanover. The North Hanover station was located seven miles west of Elizabeth. This depot was a small stop on the main line of the Chicago Great Western Railway. North Hanover spurred the creation of the Hanover Railway Company. This company was generated by the local businesses of Hanover. These businesses received resources by a small spur line which connected North Hanover Station to Hanover. Behind us is the site of North Hanover Station. It is currently located on present day Jim Young's farm. This is Jim Young. North Hanover had several purposes, one of which included a water reservoir that can be seen in the top left of this photo. This is the foundation of the North Hanover Water Reservoir. This reservoir was used to fill up the steam locomotives back in the day. When they switched to diesel locomotives, there's no more need for the water reservoir. Not only did North Hanover serve a purpose to the Chicago Great Western, it also was a site of a local historic incident. There, there used to be uh, two tracks through here. An east, one eastbound used one, westbound used the other. Well, in the, uh, uh, there wasn't enough, I guess, traffic to really justify two tracks. And so in a cost-saving program, they, they tore up one track. And so they were just going to run, run everything on one track then. Uh, in the, as soon as they got the track tore up, then they had to change their signals. The signals were set up as, uh, uh, on the two tracks, and they had to set it up then for uh, uh, traffic running both ways on the same track. To this day, we can still see the remains of the signal boxes that were used to direct train traffic. So after they got this one uh, track tore up then, until they got the signals done, they were running on train orders. And uh, the order would tell the, uh, would tell the train crew uh, uh, where, he would, uh, where he would pull over and meet another train, an, an oncoming train and so on like this. Well, they had this uh, eastbound train was coming uh, was coming uh, up toward North Hanover, and he was to he was to pull off on the siding in North Hanover and wait for a westbound train, which was uh, was coming out coming in close to stop. Well, at North Hanover, this water tower that was put there is on this this hill, and it is the only place really that you wouldn't have a pretty pretty clear view for a fair distance ahead and it, it makes almost a 90 degree turn just beyond where the North Hanover station was. And uh, it would have blocked the view of, of uh, both of those engineers. And there, there was time involved in there. So he was, supposed to, he was supposed to wait there until a certain time for this other train. Well, he waited until that time and the, the train didn't come. So he pulled out figuring that it was probably, you know, waiting uh, Stockton or someplace. Well, in the meantime, the train then was running late, the West Mountain train was running late, so he dropped his train in Stockton and just with just the, with the, just the locomotives, come on down here to try to stop this one from coming on the main so, so, he, could, so he could come on through. Well, in the meantime, while he was coming down through here, the other one pulled down on the main, on the main line and they met head on just down here about two miles south of town. <laughs> The crash occurred Saturday, June 2, 1951, at exactly 8.22 a.m. 
five miles east of the Winston Tunnel. The main line between the Winston Tunnel and Stockton, Illinois was being changed from double track to single track, and the trains were then operating on one track. The crash was a direct result of impeding landscape and lack of communication. And uh, I don't know how many units uh, they could salvage out of there, but uh, everybody jumped but uh, the engineer on the, uh, on the eastbound train. And he stayed on, and uh, he was trapped in there then after, uh, after the accident. And uh, they had to cut him out. But they got him out of there, and they got him to the hospital, and, and uh, he made it. You know? and so he was the only one that was hurt out of there. Nobody was killed. In 1906, the Hanover Railway Company was created. This railway was built, owned, and operated entirely by private businesses. I know it was funded by people in Hanover because the railroad did not go through Hanover. It was further north and they at the time had a very active Hanover woolen mill and they wanted particularly to have connections for shipping the products of the Hanover woolen mill and the materials that they needed at the mill. The Hanover woolen mill was organized in 1864 by James W. White. The woolen mill became the largest woolen mill west of Chicago after the construction of the current building in 1921 at a cost of $250,000. The woolen mill was a major business that employed a large percentage of the Hanover public. Today the building is used by the Company of Invences and is still a major employer of Hanover. If we look to the bottom right, we can see where the North Hanover Spur Line began. The spur line was a very small scale railroad that ran a short one and a half mile distance. This railroad ended behind the Hanover Lumber Yard on what is now Jackson Street and was the location of the Hanover Depot. Now we travel to Hanover, where local citizens describe the spur line's importance to the economy of Hanover. It was served a couple of purposes, uh, a passenger line and uh, also brought uh, goods from uh, North Hanover to the old woolen mill. Uh, that's how they got their uh, products there. And what was the purpose of this spur line that ran from the North Hanover station? Well, they, they haul lumber and uh, coal and everything else down to Hanover. The Chicago Great Western Railroad is truly a legend that has faded with time. It served a key role in influencing the towns in which it passed through. Many such towns still contain the depot of the Chicago Great Western, while others only possess overgrown foundations. North Hanover was a small but all the more vital part of the railroad. It is unfortunate that a place with so much history has nearly been lost. Where there once stood a bustling depot, now lies cracked cement slabs. Where there once stood mighty bridges that held the weight of enormous trains, now lies stone columns hidden in the countryside. And where once lay an ongoing track headed for visions of a better future, now lies an overgrown, covered path and the only remnants of North Hanover and the Chicago Great Western remain is a memory and the ghostly sounds of a train whistle in the distance.